for this class. It was five hours. On Friday was the gender intervention, or sorry, the gender portion of the course. One hour on gender. The fallout from that, I can't underestimate this, was all these kids came over to my house. All these girls came to my house and they were sitting on my front lawn and they all said that they had a different gender identity than a straight kid. Women are currently being erased in culture and I want to amplify their voices and share their stories. Welcome to This is a Woman podcast. If you tuned in last week, you would have heard from the amazing Erin Friday, attorney, co-lead of our duty. She's fighting this trans movement and fighting against the erasure of women here in, in California, and it's ultimately benefiting people across the nation. So if you haven't checked out last week's episode, go back now, listen to part one. And if you have, today we're going to dive into her personal testimony and her story of what happened to her daughter. And I just want to emphasize something really cool about Erin is she is a lifelong Democrat. She voted for same sex marriage and she is standing against the trans ideology. And that just goes to show this is, this is more than politics. This isn't, um, a, a partisan issue. This is a human issue. This is children are being mutilated. Their bodies are being sterilized. And so you're going to hear from Erin on this episode about her personal testimony of getting her daughter out of this. You're going to learn if your child is struggling with gender ideology and confusion on their identity, how you can help get them back on track to let them know that they were born perfectly and they were not made in the wrong body. So I'm so excited for you guys all to hear from Erin and her story on this episode. With that, now I would just love for you to share kind of what got you started in all of this and your personal story of gender ideology coming into your home. Uh, yes. So the gender fairy arrived at our home um, as my daughter was uh, starting high school. But I found it actually started before that. It started in seventh grade when she got her dose of sex ed at her public school. And um, the school, the public school had brought in a third party to come and teach all these kids about sex ed and, you know, involved parents, but not involved enough. I had no idea that the curriculum had changed to be an hour about gender identity. And that these kids were told that they can opt in and opt out of their sex and that they could be born wrong. And they were given a nice dose of, you know, jazz Jennings. Mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, the immediate implication after this class, it was five hours on Friday was the gender intervention or sorry the gender portion of the course one hour on gender the fallout from that i can't underestimate this was all these kids came over to my house all these girls came to my house and they were sitting on my front lawn and they all said that they had a different gender identity than a straight kid 100% of them. That was the power of this sex ed course. Each one of these kids picked lesbian, pansexual, polyamorous. They were 11. Pansexual? Polyamorous? These kids never even kissed somebody. And they're claiming some sexual identity? Lesbian? I'm not sure they know. 100% of them. Power of the schools. That's why we need to get it out of the schools. So that seed was planted. Once my daughter was going through a crisis, it's COVID, isolation, depression, loneliness, a feeling of not belonging, lost. 
Then that seed grew because she had been told by her school, by the internet, that if you're sad, if you're depressed, you can feel awesome if you just transition. You may be born wrong. That's the whole issue. You can go to the internet right now and type in, am I trans? You will come up with a questionnaire. And if you fill it out, I pretty much guarantee you it's going to come up that you're trans. Mm -hmm. I personally am super trans. <laughs> I mean, I pass with flying colors. Um, and this is what these kids are doing. And then they pass them on to each other. And then they get into chat rooms. And if you put female to male on your Instagram account, FTM, it's a calling card for groomers. Mm. Groomers of all levels. Groomers who are telling you to um, that all your sorrow will disappear if you transition. All you need to do is, is start wearing a binder and start sitting like a boy and behaving like a boy. Get your hair cut. It follows a pattern. These kids wear this. They wear a uniform. Hawaiian shirts, buttoned up shirts, you know, up to their necks. Uh, they teach each other how to sit. So there's groomers in that sense, grooming them towards transitioning. And it's older kids, 17 year olds, talking to 13 year olds. This is why the Trevor Project is so dangerous because they have chat rooms for 24 year olds all the way down to 14. So kids, indoctrinating kids, it's a fantastic movement. So, so smart. So all of that is happening, the loneliness, all of that is happening. She digs back into where I, you know, what's going to make her happy? What's going to make her better? Well, transitioning is, of course. And then she started high school, online high school, right down the hall from me. And I discovered that the school was secretly transitioning her. So they were using a different name, a different pronoun at her bequest, 13. They're following what a 13 year old wants. Not calling me, not letting me know my, my daughter's struggling. Um, and that's when, that's when I took the deep dive. That's when I quit my job and I did what lawyers do and that is read everything and I very quickly discovered that it wasn't just my child. Because initially I was like, well, not my kid. My kid's not trans, but other kids are for sure. My daughter was really girly. And then I realized there are no trans kids. There are only children that are struggling with gender identity. You read the studies, you start to understand that this is all smoke and mirrors. You see the um, uptick of 5,000% of kids saying that they're trans, 75% of them being females. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand that this is a social contagion, just as Lisa Lippman wrote in her papers. Um, but the damage is already done. So this has been brewing and this had been cooking in my daughter for since seventh grade. And then I had to work. My whole family had to work. She had to work to, to reverse course and to get her out of what I call the gender cult, because that's what it is. Because you have all these online people telling her that her mother is a bigot. Her mother's hateful. Her mother doesn't love her. Her family doesn't love her. You're going to kill yourself. All these horrible things have been feeding, been fed to her. And I have to now remind her of how amazing she is as a girl and remind her without going direct, you know, directly in how much I love her because you are parenting against millions. The internet is a strong pull. There are millions of people telling her that I'm a horrible human and not to love me, to run away, to emancipate. She even provided me the papers to, to emancipate. There are glitter families willing to take her in. 
Uh, so it's grueling. It's a really grueling, grueling process to get her out because you're really deprogramming. Um, and uh, some parents don't have the strength to do it mm -hmm. or they're afraid. Um, they lose their agency. They lose their confidence. Uh, but they can't. You can't because the end result is that your child will transition. There is no wait and see. There is no, this is a phase that's going to pass. It doesn't work. Parents have to um, employ uh, tools to get their child out. Silence is not going to do it. Um, and it's hard and your child's going to hate you during the process. It's as if you are pulling the drugs away from your child. Drug addicts hate the person taking them to rehab and hate them for taking their drugs away and their money away. But that's your job as a parent. Your job is to, to take the hate, swallow it down and understand that hopefully at the end, your child will love you again. And I say this, and this is a really hard thing to say, is that, sorry, even if my child never talked to me again, or never had a relationship with me again after I worked to pull her out of this, I would have been okay knowing that I saved my daughter's body and I gave her a future. And I would have given her up, the relationship I have with her up to give her that future. And that's a hard thing to say, um, but that's the love of a parent. I know parents who have given up custody of their children so that they can keep medical control over their child to protect their child's body. That's an extremely loving parent to do that. And we shouldn't have to do that. No, and like you said, that's not an easy thing to say or I can't even imagine having to experience that or think that as a parent but I think it ultimately shows that we're we're on the right side of things you're on the right side of this because you're willing to lose you were willing to lose your relationship with your daughter because you loved her enough that you didn't want her to ruin her body and lose who she really was and I think that just goes to show when you see the other side, it's we're here to affirm you and we'll take you to all the trans surgeries and do that and that because you're going to love us for doing that for you and then all that. But then they leave them when they're no longer happy with all the changes they made to their bodies. And so, like I said, I can't even imagine as a parent having to go through that, but that just shows again the teachers aren't going to do that for the child. They're not going to sit there and hold their hand and be willing to put the relationship with the student on the door for what's best with them. That's what the parents are for. And that's why parents need to be so involved in what's going on. You know, these, te these teachers think that they're doing something wonderful. These schools think that they're doing something wonderful. They leave these kids. They drop them. They drop them over the summer. They drop them at three o'clock in the afternoon. They're not there when my daughter's, you know, in such a depressive state that I'm driving her up and down the highway at two o'clock in the morning where I'm laying in bed with her, patting her and telling her how much I love her. They're not there. None of those teachers that changed my daughter's name or hid it from me, not one of them called her or called me to see how she was doing. They didn't care. They never do. They, they don't really, no one loves a child more than their parents. Mm -hmm. I have never heard a teacher say, I would lay down my life for your child. Mm -hmm. I have heard it from parents. I have never heard a teacher say, I will go bankrupt. I will spend all my money trying to get you to the best college or, uh, you know, get you the mental health that you need. I've never heard a teacher say that. Mm 
Mm -hmm. I will sell my car so that I can, I can fight for custody for you. They don't do that. Parents do that. Politicians don't do that. They don't care about our kids. The parents do, yet they want to cut us out. They want to call us all evil, bigot, child abusers. Where were they? Where were they when my daughter was crying? They weren't there. They're never there. And, you know, parent, once you're a parent, you never stop being that parent. Regardless of what age that child is, we have parents whose kids have fully transitioned, who have um, not spoken to their parents in years. And those parents are still waiting. They're sitting by the door with their arms open, waiting, saying they'll always be there, we'll accept you. We will always be here. That's what parents do. We are always there ready to catch, you know, ready to love. My mother still mother, mothers me. I'm in my fifties. Um, I will never stop mothering my kids. That's what we do. Once a mother, always a mother. It's just the way it happens. It's, you can't even explain until you have kids. You'll you'll remember this, Sophia, when you hold your baby and you'll just be like, this is insane mm -hmm. how much I love this child. And again, I think that just emphasizes the importance of parents know what's best. They know their child. And like you said, the teacher's not there after 3 p.m. They're not there with them on the weekends. They're not there with them in the summers. And... So I guess that kind of leads back to you started recoursing everything your daughter has been taught by these teachers when they have her for the small amount of time they have her. And so for those that haven't really heard your story about this before, you were able to get her out of all of this um, gender ideology, correct? My daughter no longer believes that she's a boy. Have I gotten her out of the whole gender ideology? I don't think so. Uh, she's still a minor. I think she may still believe that there are trans kids. Um, you know, we're in California. We're in Northern California, right outside of San Francisco. It's ubiquitous. It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a, she's still young. So does she still believe people can be born on the wrong body? Probably. Uh, she just doesn't believe that she has been. Uh, but this is part of the, this is part of it. Her frontal lobe isn't formed. She's 17. She's not mature yet. She doesn't know what she dodged. She doesn't understand that the people that are pushing this are actually the people that she rebels against. Mm -hmm. You know, white males. You know, the medical complex. Like That's the joke of it, isn't it? These kids think they're like sticking it to the man. Well, they're actually feeding the man. Mm -hmm. But they don't understand this. You know, there she's still in she's still in uh, school. In she's in a Catholic school, and this school um, actually this year has a pull down menu for male, female, and non binary. Mm. It's a lot to ask of. You know, it's a long road for kids to figure this out. In total, that um, all of this movement is is a is a lie. Um, it's difficult for them, but she will. I mean, I, I believe that she, she will. I, mean, I think back to when I was a kid. Um, I don't think I was thankful to my parents until I was in my 20s. I understood what sacrifices they made for me. Mm -hmm. um, critical thinking doesn't really happen until 23, 25 with the frontal lobe. Again, we know this. This is science. This is not new. This is why... You can't rent a car until you're 25. Why you can't rent a VRBO because the actuaries know the brain isn't fully formed. Long-term consequences are not understood by these immature brains. We know all this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, my daughter doesn't believe that she's a, a boy. She's embracing her female body. But does she believe that 
a girl can change into being a boy? Probably a little bit. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. She'll get there. She'll get there. And you got, I mean, I think when your child is, like you kind of said, being visited by the gender fairy, I think the most important step is getting them to realize for themselves that they're in the right body. I think, because if you were to change her mind and say, no, all these other people are wrong, but she still felt it for herself, I feel like it's not as important as the opposite way. The step one is let's get you back on track. Let's get you to realize you're in the perfect body. You were born in the right body. And then everything as you grow up and mature will kind of come along. But that's, I think, step one of focusing on you first. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and you do it indirectly. You do all this stuff indirectly. Like I still have the indirect conversations with her. Uh, she has a friend who um, was sexually assaulted and goes by they, them. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, she's actually putting herself in more harm because she's actually letting those male bodies who assaulted her now in her private bathrooms mm -hmm. and changing rooms. And so you just, and then you walk away. So you leave that, mm -hmm. you know, because they don't actually understand that. They think they're actually being progressive. I'm like, you're actually not, you're putting a female body in, in danger. Mm -hmm. um, and so you do things like that. You, you kind of drop these, these little statements um, along the way. She'll get there. They all do. Sometimes, I mean, it took me a while, right? I started out with not my kid, mm -hmm. everybody else's kid, sure. Not mine though, because she really was girly. And then you start to read and then you realize it's all untrue. Mm -hmm. It's all untrue. So it does, it, it does take steps. And again, it's a young mind. Um, and I just wish, you know, it would change faster. I just wish we would stop promoting the Dylan Mulvaney's of the world and the, um, just this false narrative. I mean, you can't walk down the street now where, it, you know, classrooms are filled with trans flags. It makes it all real for these kids because the adults are saying it's real. It does. And, um, We'll wrap up kind of with this. I had um, Ali Snyder recently on the podcast, and she gave a really good explanation of how to talk to your children about a boy is a boy and a girl is a girl. And then um, someone actually commented on one of the posts about the podcast. Well, what do I do if my child's already kind of sucked into it? Not just believing that a boy can be a girl or a girl can be a boy, but is kind of getting sucked into the whole gender ideology and confusion of themselves. And I, you gave a great explanation of just little things that you did here and there, but what's just a piece of advice you can give to parents that are struggling with their children, struggling with gender identity? Um, well, I did, a, I did quite a few things, but I'll tell you the first thing I'm, I'm going to show you. I, don't, I can't, I can't see myself, so I don't know if you can see these books. I'll just read them. Um, but there's a, for, parents, you need to read this book called Transing Our Children, and it's by Aaron Brewer, and it explains what is happening mm -hmm. at the schools. So you need to be first and foremost aware of what your child's being exposed to, um, and then you need to learn how to stop the exposure as much as possible, which is don't let your child get the sex ed course, do not sign up for any, or opt out of all surveys. Uh, do read every book that your child is supposed to read, read it before they read it, uh, read every assignment. If you don't like that classroom, if that classroom is filled with uh, trans activist type flags and decorations, ask for a new teacher. Mm. Um, know everything that your child is learning at school. Um, I actually talked to a woman in Oakland. She told her child to walk out of the classroom every time they say the word transgender and the child does. And then mom comes and picks up the child because they're now teaching this stuff in math word problems. Um, they're sneaking it in everywhere they can. Uh, so first and foremost, parents need to be aware of what's being taught at their kid, you know, to their kids. Go in that classroom, look at all the books on the bookshelf, take a picture of the books on the bookshelf and then go look them up and see if these are books that you are comfortable with your child reading. 
um, beware of what's in the library. You can go to uh, GLSEN's website because GLSEN will send your school library a free set of books, you know, glitter books, pride books, um, and so you can easily look and see what titles are bad. If your child is stuck in this vortex, there is a book called Desist, Detrans, and Detox, mm. and it's by Maria Keffler. Um, I used this to help find the words to get my child out. Uh, I did a podcast with The Daily Signal where I went through a lot of the um, things that I did to help get my child out of it. And first and foremost, it's a hard, this is hard. You got to take that phone. You got to shut down the internet. And parents say, I can't, I won't. It's too hard. You must. Mm -hmm. You can. It's hard to parent in this world now. It's much more difficult than ever, but you need to regain your agency. You are the parent. It is your job to protect your child. The phone. Got to take it for a while. Not forever. And you got to go into that phone and see what your child's been looking at. Because I guarantee you, it's going to curl your toes. Mm. Um, and then make sure your child is out in nature, reality, sports, tire your child out. It's like a puppy. <laughs> Don't let your child have that time to ruminate. Rumination is bad during puberty. This is when they look at themselves as not being perfect and they compare themselves. No TikTok, no TikTok, no TikTok, Instagram. They don't need this to survive. Mm -hmm. They tell you that they do, but they don't. They don't need this stuff. So there's a lot of things that parents can do to start working to get their kid out. Things not to do. Do not tell your child all about the medical repercussions of doing this. Mm -hmm. These kids don't have the capacity to understand it. You can't go in directly. You have to go in indirectly. And you don't have long conversations. Um, you don't lecture. You do drive-bys. That's what I call them. When Johnson & Johnson had its vaccine out and it wasn't good for women, I asked my daughter, I said, hey, is this good for you? Are you allowed to take this? And she got very angry with me. But I didn't wait for the anger. Like, I just walked away. I know, I know I'm a female. That's a win. You know, that's a... That's a realization on her that she's a female. Mm. Like these are these are tricks, right? You go around it. You watch um, uh, cult shows with them. Mm. You don't, you know, you you just watch them just calmly or whatever, or dope sick or one of the um, you know uh, shows about big pharma and uh, the opioid addiction. Mm. And then you throw in, huh, you know, I wonder what the medical communities, what kind of money they're making off of transitioning kids. And then you walk away mm. and you don't have the conversation. You let them have to think about it because you're right, Sophia, they have to come to this on their own mm -hmm. with a lot of nudging. Kids don't like to be tricked. Um, yeah, so there's 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 some tools. So I would I would this this book honestly um, desist, detrans, and detox was my bible. Yeah, that's perfect. I think that's so helpful because I mean this isn't something that people grew up with, and for parents nowadays, this is so brand new to them. They can't really go to their parents and say, "How did you get?" my brother do this or me do this. This is so brand new. And so I think the, all the parents that are listening, this information is going to be so helpful for them. But Aaron, this was amazing. I am so excited for everyone to be able to just learn from you and everything. I'm sure, you know, sometimes we talk about this stuff and you're way more knowledgeable on the whole trans issue than like I'm even near to be. So when I hear things from you, I'm just like, overwhelmed by all the craziness and so I can't imagine all these people that don't talk about this on the day-to-day -day basis or don't 
hear as much about it. So I just know this is going to be great that for everyone that's listening. And then um, the best way for people kind of to follow along is it, should I direct them to the R duty Twitter and social, social media stuff or. Yeah, I would go to um, R duty dot group. If, if you have any interest whatsoever in reaching out or um, getting involved in any kind of activism, it could be again, super minor. Um, I would love to hear from you. Uh, the, the Twitter accounts um, are run by our international group. We also have some other Twitter accounts that people can follow, which is at DTransAware. Um, that's a group of us uh, that post on that. Um, and I am now on Twitter in my real name, so you can look me up. I don't know. There's some weird numbers after it. <laughs> um, because at some point I, I was incognito. Um, but yeah, I mean, please reach out. And, you know, most importantly, what I really want people to do is look, it's $25, um, $100. Donate to um, Protect Kids uh, CA uh, because really we get these initiatives on the ballot. We can end this. We we need to end this faster. Um, Too many children are going to grow up sterilized and the suicide rates are going to explode and uh we need to protect these kids it's our it's our duty to do so so please join us perfect and then everyone listening or watching i'll put all the information in the caption of where to find everything at so you guys can click on all that but thank you so much aaron for